from JBS Studios in Greater New York. This is the JBS News Update with Tisha Bader. I'm Tisha Bader with the JBS News Update for Thursday, September the 5th, 2019. We open with some surprising news. The White House said today that U.S. Special Representative for International Negotiations Jason Greenblatt will step down from his role after the U.S. peace plan for Israel and the Palestinians is released, which is expected just after Israel's national elections on September the 17th. President Trump said that Greenblatt was leaving to pursue work in the private sector and that his dedication to Israel and to seeking peace between Israel and the Palestinians won't be forgotten. Greenblatt tweeted that he was so grateful to have worked on the potential to improve the lives of millions of Israelis, Palestinians and others. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu thanked Greenblatt for his dedication toward peace and security, he wrote, and for never hesitating for a moment to speak the truth about Israel in front of those who defame it. And with the elections under two weeks away, Israeli diplomats abroad cast their ballots today. Some 5,100 Israelis stationed in 96 embassies and consulates voted throughout the day today, with Israel's ambassador to New Zealand casting the first vote early this morning. Israeli law does not allow absentee ballot voting for its private citizens living abroad. The diplomatic exception includes also emissaries sent abroad by the Jewish Agency, the Jewish National Fund, and the World Zionist Organization, as well as their spouses and children who are of age. Prime Minister Netanyahu made a quick trip to London ahead of the elections. He met with new UK Prime Minister Boris Johnson today, thanking him for his support and mentioned some security challenges he hoped to address in their meeting. I uh, want to say that you've been a great friend of the Jewish people in Israel. I applaud your staunch stance against anti-Semitism, your support for Israel's security. Uh, our uh, relations are at an all-time high. It's not that we lack challenges. We have uh, the challenge of Iran's aggression and terrorism. And I'd like to talk to you about how we can work together to counter these things for the benefit of peace. Johnson welcomed Netanyahu and reaffirmed the UK's backing of two states. The UK uh, is still supporting all efforts to reach a solution uh, to the, in the Middle East peace process. And a, a two-state solution, if you will recall, remains our uh, before departing for Britain this morning, Netanyahu addressed what he called more defiance by Iran, referring to the Islamic Republic's President Hassan Rouhani yesterday threatening to accelerate Iran's nuclear enrichment in violation of the 2015 nuclear deal. Netanyahu said now is not the time for talks with Iran, but time to increase pressure on Iran and that he would be discussing that issue with Johnson as well as with the U.S. Secretary of Defense Mark Esper while in London today. President Trump had commented about a meeting with the Iranian leader that anything was possible. And when asked about that by reporters today, Netanyahu said he would not tell the president who he can meet and when. Well, Jewish Argentine tennis player Diego Schwartzman will not advance to the semifinals at the U.S. Open. The top Jewish player in the world last night after a hard-fought battle lost to Spain's Rafael Nadal, who is the favorite to win the global event being held in New York. Jewish-Brazilian social entrepreneur David Hertz has won the 2019 Charles Bronfman Prize for his efforts to end global hunger. Hertz co-founded Gastromotiva, which fights unemployment and social inequality by giving free vocational and kitchen training and education to those in need in Brazil, El Salvador, South Africa, and Mexico. Germany has returned two medieval panels stolen by the Nazis from a Jewish art collector to his heirs. Artnet reports that the Predella panels by Giovanni de Paolo dating back to 1455 were in Berlin's old master gallery and returned to the family of Harry Fold with the assistance of the Prussian Cultural Heritage Foundation. And today we remember the 11 Israeli athletes who were murdered at the Munich Olympics. On September the 5th of 1972, Palestinian terror group Black September stormed the rooms where the athletes slept in Munich's Olympic Village, murdering two of them and taking the other nine hostages, murdering them the following day. They were Moshe Weinberg, Yosef Romano, Zeev Friedman, 
David Berger, Yaakov Springer, Eliezer Halfin, Yosef Goodfreund, Kehat Shor, Mark Slavin, Amitzor Shapira, and Andre Spitzer. And we pay tribute to the Munich 11 here on JBS tonight at 7.30. Andre Spitzer's widow Anki talks about the lack of security at the 1972 games and discusses Israel's security today. At 8, Dan Alon, who was a member of the Israeli fencing team at the games, recounts the infamous hostage taking and murder and how he narrowly escaped. At 9 tonight, Mark Golub sits down with Peter Kurz, who's president of the Israel Association of Baseball, also with filmmaker Jeremy Newberger, who talk about their film showing Team Israel's success in the 2017 World Baseball Classic. At 10, Yeshiva University's Jeffrey Gurok talks American Jewelry and Sports. And coming up right after this newscast, it's Innovation Israel followed by Talmud Study. And that's the JBS News Update for Thursday, September the 5th, 2019. I'm Tisha Bader.